This is going to be a study on the subject of Bible baptisms. Uh, this will help anyone who's struggling with people who try to tell them that we're saved by getting baptized in water. For example, the Church of Christ will tell you this, and other real cults will tell you this, uh, and make you doubt your salvation because you weren't baptized by the pastor in their church. But the Bible is clear what saves a person. And being baptized in water doesn't save a person. But if you look at Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 2, it says of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. Notice the word baptism in the word or in the verse is plural. Baptisms. Uh, I want to start out by saying water baptism does not save and remember the story of the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter 8. He asked Philip, What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he said, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Then Philip baptized him. And you have those who believe in infant baptism, such as the Catholics. And they believe a baby must be baptized in water and that this has soul-saving quality to it. And the Church of Christ cult teaches salvation through water baptism as well as many other cults. And then you have the opposite end of the extreme. Uh, Hyper-dispensationalists get rid of water baptism for today completely. And I've been labeled a hyper-dispensationalist by people, but I'm not a hyper-dispensationalist. Hyper-dispensationalists are against water baptism for today. Uh, they're against confession of sins for today. And they only take Romans through Philemon as doctrine for today, which I don't do any of those things. That's taking rightly dividing to an extreme. I don't overly divide the Bible, but I don't underly divi divide the Bible. Uh, most people have no idea what hyper-dispensationalists are. They just label anyone who's a dispensationalist to be a hyper-dispensationalist. Uh, so they accuse people like Ruckman, Sam Gipp, and William Grady of being hyper-dispensationalists, even though they aren't. But hyper-dispensationalists are against water baptism, period, for today, along with the Lord's Supper and confession of sins, and they will only take the Pauline epistles or prison epistles for doctrine today so they are the, on the opposite extreme when it comes to water baptism they're completely against it whereas church of christ take it to the other extreme and they believe it saves a person and really all baptism is it's just getting wet it doesn't save anybody and if you want to have a balanced view on baptism then you're going to make less of a deal about it than anybody else does uh, Ephesians 4, 4 through 6 says, There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Now, since the verse says one baptism, uh, many will teach that there is only one baptism in all of the Bible. And that sounds good and right if you don't consider the fact that it also says one spirit, yet the Bible talks about unclean spirits, lying spirits, a spirit of divination, man's spirit. And verse 5 and 6 says one Lord and one God, yet 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 5 there says there are God's many and Lord's many. So is this a contradiction? It's definitely not a contradiction because there is no contradictions or errors in the Bible. It's that Ephesians 4 is talking about like the main thing of each thing mentioned. If you know what I mean. There is one spirit that saves, uh, one Lord that saves, one faith and baptism that saves, one God who saves, and, and so on. You get what I'm saying? The main thing. Uh, the God of gods is the one God, God Almighty. Uh, there is actually more than one baptism in Scripture, just like there's more than one spirit in scripture and we're not denying ephesians 4 
4 through 6 by saying this because the Bible also says it and teaches it. So there's more than one baptism in the Bible and not all of them have anything to do with water. And I'm going to show you the different baptisms in the Bible and show you the one baptism which saves and it has absolutely nothing to do with H2O. And hopefully this will clear up any confusion. But number one, you have Moses' baptism. Uh, this baptism has to do with protection under God's judgment. In 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 2, it says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant, how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Now, if every time the word baptism in the Bible refers to full immersion in water baptism, then what about here in 1 Corinthians 10? Moses and the children of Israel walk through on dry ground, yet it says they were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And that's a lot different than all the other baptisms in the Bible. Uh, that's not the baptism we do today, believer's baptism. That's completely different. Uh, we're not going under water on dry ground that some somebody's raised up like they did in the book of Exodus. And another baptism is John's baptism by full immersion in water. Uh, this baptism, unlike today, has to do with repentance and recognition of Jesus Christ as the Messiah. And we already know Jesus Christ is the Messiah. And that isn't why we are baptized. Our water baptism today is about a testimony of what has taken place inside. Now, the people John was preaching to didn't even know who Jesus was yet. And John is said to be a friend of the bridegroom. He wasn't a, a part of the bride of Christ. The body of Christ hadn't even started yet. And this is a completely different baptism than we have today. John is an Old Testament prophet. And the New Testament didn't start until the death of the testator. And even non-dispensationalists will recognize the difference between the Old and New Testaments. And the New Testament didn't start until the death of the testator, according to Hebrews. John 3.23 says, And John also was baptizing in Anan near to Salem, because there was much water there, and they came and were baptized. And that's a good a proof of full immersion in baptism. He was baptizing because there was much water there. And notice that John didn't sprinkle. He was doing it by full immersion. And I believe that's how we do it even today in the New Testament. Matthew 3.11 says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now, although John's baptism was by full immersion, just like we do today, it wasn't exactly like believer's baptism that we do today. Uh, John 1.31 says, And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. So John's baptism was to manifest Jesus Christ to Israel. It had to do with Israel and trying to convince Israel that Jesus Christ was who he said he was. That's what John was trying to do. And now the next baptism, it doesn't have anything to do with water. It's Jesus' baptism of suffering. In Matthew 20 and verse 22, it says, But Jesus answered and said, You know not what ye ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of, and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They say unto him, We are able. Jesus is speaking of the crucifixion. And notice it says, Are ye able to drink the cup that I shall drink of? Before Jesus died on the cross, he said, Let this cup pass from me. So this is the baptism of his death on the cross, and it has nothing to do with water. However, baptism is a perfect word here because his death is typified by being drowned in water. And as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly. Now this baptism 
had absolutely nothing to do with water, as you, as you see. Yet the Church of Christ believed baptism is always about water baptism in the Bible. They believe the one baptism of Ephesians 4 is water baptism, and that you have to be baptized in water to go to heaven. However, water baptism is a separate issue from salvation altogether. And moving on, the next baptism is Peter's water baptism. And this baptism has to do with Israel's rejection of the Messiah. Most people will teach that John's baptism and Peter's baptism is exactly like the baptism we do today. But I believe those are different baptisms. And while John and Peter's baptism are similar, they're different. Because... His baptism has to do with Israel's rejection of the Messiah. Acts 2, 37 and 38 says, Now when they heard this, the Jews, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? They're saying, What shall we do? Because we've crucified the Lord Jesus Christ. And then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And this is every heretic's favorite Bible verse. Every cult leader goes nuts on this verse. And they teach by this verse that you have to repent, believe, and be baptized in water to go to heaven and to get the Holy Ghost. So they're teaching you got to be baptized in water to get the Holy Ghost. I don't get baptized in water to get the Holy Ghost. I got it the moment I believed the gospel. And they fail to rightly divide the word of truth. They don't understand that the book of Acts is a transi transition book going from God dealing with Jews into dealing with the church. And in Acts 2, you have Peter preaching to Jews who have just crucified the Lord Jesus Christ. And notice in Acts 2.37, they asked Peter, What shall we do? As I said before, why were they asking this? Because they just crucified Jesus Christ this was a baptism just for Israel because of the crucifixion. And they rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. Now the next one is the one for today. It's a believer's baptism by immersion in water. And this is for a testimony or figure of us being saved by grace through faith. Uh, Acts 10, 47 through 48 says, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Now, this is the only water baptism for today. However, it definitely isn't the baptism which saves. Notice they are baptized after they received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Unlike in Acts 2.38, when they didn't get the Holy Ghost until they were baptized by Peter's baptism. If you want to go exactly by what the Bible says, that's what it says. If they got baptized, they got the gift of the Holy Ghost in Acts 2.38. And now in Acts 10.47, notice the transition it says, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? They had already received the Holy Ghost before water baptism. Just like me and you today. We believe the gospel of 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, how that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. We put our trust in that, and the moment we did that, we received the Holy Ghost. And He sealed me up. I'm sealed into the day of redemption. And that's what happened here in Acts 10, 47. And these men believed the gospel to salvation, were given the Holy Ghost the moment they believed, and were baptized after believing and after they received the Holy Ghost, and they were sealed into the day of redemption. They weren't baptized to get the Holy Ghost. Remember, in Acts 2, 38, it says, If they participated in Peter's baptism... Peter said, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Do you want to go by what the Bible says, or do you want to go by what you've always been taught? I want to go by what the Bible says, whether anybody likes it or not. I don't know about you, but that's what I want to do. And in Acts 10, 47, they already have the Holy Ghost before they were baptized. 
And now the Holy Spirit hasn't always operated like it does today. And even non-dispensationalists believe that. They go as far as saying that people in the Old Testament didn't have the Holy Spirit in them. Now, that's what a lot of non-dispensationalists teach. I'm dispensational, and I believe some people in the Old Testament did have the Holy Spirit in them, but they weren't sealed until the day of redemption, like us. In the Old Testament, the Holy Ghost could come and leave, unlike today where you're sealed until the day of redemption. And now there is a baptism that will get you the Holy Ghost, and it has absolutely nothing to do with water. And that's the next baptism we're going to discuss here in a minute. Uh, 1 Peter 3, 20 through 21 says, Which sometime were disobedient when once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few that his eight souls were saved by water. The like figure were unto even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting of the way of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And many will use these verses here to prove water baptism saves. However, the like figure in verse 3 and 20, Noah and his family didn't even touch the water. Uh, they were saved by water in that it never touched them. Noah was dry. He didn't get in the water. He got in the ark. And... Uh, it, if you look at 1 Peter 3.21, it says, The like figure run through even baptism doth also now save us. Baptism is a figure. It's And it says, Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. Uh, you're not washing your sins away in the water. It has nothing to do with getting your sins taken away. I mean, think about it. It's common sense. Does a man, a sinful man, dunking you in water take away your sin and get the blood applied to your soul that's crazy the bible is clear that the blood is applied to your soul by believing the gospel moving on the baptism that saves the next baptism we're going to discuss is the baptism of the holy spirit and first corinthians 12 13 says for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. That is the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which has absolutely nothing to do with H2O. Romans 6, 3 through 4, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even as so we also should walk in newness of life. And now this has nothing to do with water. This is the spirit baptism. Know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. You weren't baptized in Jesus Christ when you were dunked in water. You were baptized into Jesus Christ when you believed the gospel. Colossians 2, 11 through 12 says, In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And then look at Matthew three eleven. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. The moment you believe the gospel, you are baptized into the body of Christ and you are baptized with the Holy Ghost. That's what Matthew 3.11 is referring to. And this is the one baptism of Ephesians 4.4. 4. It is the one baptism which saves. And I want you to notice that Matthew 3.11 has more than one baptism in it, as we'll see in, in, in a moment. And if you believe the gospel of 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 to be your payment for sin and believe that to salvation, then you are baptized into the body of Christ without touching water. And now, moving on to the last one. It's the baptism of fire. And you don't want this baptism. It has nothing to do with speaking in tongues. This has to do with unbelievers from all ages being baptized in the lake of fire for eternity. Matthew 3.11 says, I indeed baptize you with water into repentance, 
But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So this has nothing to do with speaking in tongues. It has to do with hell fire. Matthew 3, 12. The next verse says, Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wood into the gar garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. If you reject Jesus Christ, then you will be baptized in a lake of fire, according to Matthew 3, 12, unquenchable fire. So as you can see, there are different baptism, baptisms in the Bible. There's one baptism which saves, and that is when you are baptized into Jesus Christ. The moment you are be believe the gospel, there is... The moment you believe the gospel, you're baptized into the Lord Jesus Christ. And no matter what any Church of Christ uh, cult leader says, that's how you're saved, not by water baptism. And there's a Church of Christ building everywhere I look in my town, and they all have this messed up. They teach a baptismal regeneration, meaning you have to be baptized in water to go to heaven. And this is adding works to the gospel, and they are accursed according to Galatians 1, 8 through 9. If you are a Bible believer, then you make less of a deal about water baptism than any false religion or cult on the planet. And most religious cults have water baptism as a requirement for salvation. And if you realize that there are different baptisms in the Bible, and not all of them have to do with water, and only one of them saves, you are going to come out a lot better in your doctrine. You're going to know that water baptism doesn't save. But like I said before, if you look at Matthew 3.11, again, it has three different baptisms in one verse. This is John talking. He says, I indeed baptize you with water. There's John's baptism. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me, which is Jesus, is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And that's referring to the spirit baptism which is a different baptism than John's baptism to manifest Jesus to Israel. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. That's a completely different baptism than the two I just mentioned. That is being baptized into the lake of fire. So there you have three baptisms in one verse. But I hope this has cleared up some of the stuff that these cult leaders are teaching and I hope you won't be deceived that water baptism has anything to do with your salvation the only thing that has something to do with your salvation is believing the gospel come to Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner that you are and believe on him today and you can be saved and go to heaven and then get baptized <laughs>